Hello guys and gals and welcome to a new tutorial. In today's video we're going to be recovering a topic that I originally covered in my second video ever two years ago, can you believe it? Uh, and that is snow. But instead of using the cascade system we are going to be using Niagara because a lot of you have been asking me to cover some Niagara stuff so we're going to go back over some of the old effects but this time rework them into the new system. So by default, Niagara is turned off, so what you'll need to do first is head to Edit, Plugins, and then in the search, we're just going to search for Niagara. Turn on both Niagara and Niagara Extras, and when you do this, the engine will need to restart, and it's very likely that your engine will stop loading at around 45 to 55%. If you go ahead and let that load, it will carry on. It's not frozen, it just has a lot of data that it needs to bring in. So first thing I'll say is that we're using... 420. Yay. Um, so if you're using this or later, it should work just fine. So as you can see, what we're going to be doing is creating this lovely snow. Now, you can see as it hits the floor, it stops and sticks. And if it hits a surface that isn't uh, horizontal on the ground, the snow will slide down the edge like it's melting, which is pretty cool. So the first thing that we need to talk about is the fact that Niagara uses systems and emitters separately. With the Cascade system, it was all kind of built into its its own thing. You had a particle system that had emitters already contained within itself. Now you have to do the things separately. Like if we just drag in a particle system, it will work. But we can't just pull in an emitter. We have to use a system from Niagara. But we are going to be using an emitter, a system won't work without an emitter. So the first thing we need to do is create the emitter. So we're going to right click, head to FX, and then we're going to go to Niagara Emitter. And we're going to call this snow underscore emitter. We're going to open this up and it's going to look a little bit daunting. It's very different from what you're used to with Cascade. But essentially all of this information here, the different sections, green, orange, and red, are the same things that we have here in this lovely little list in the old system. The difference is that it, some of it has different names, some of it's a bit harder to access, but the things that we can do with it are much greater. Now, while we try to move around these particles, you're going to see that you have a different uh, controller scheme than you are used to. And this is because the orbit mode is turned on. So if you turn off orbit mode, you'll get your WASD back, which is I much prefer. It's so much nicer. So what we're going to do is we're just going to edit these things to act and look more like snow. We're not going to change the material because this little white dot kind of does the job. Um, if you have got the old material from the old snow project, which was just a, uh, which was a snowflake alpha, go ahead and plug this in here and it will work just fine. If you've created your own snowflake, that's cool, but we are just going to be using this for the purposes of this tutorial. So the first things that we're going to do is we're just going to change around some of how this thing works. So we we don't really need to mess with the emitter properties. It's already set to pretty much what we need it to be. So we're not going to mess with the emitter properties. The life cycle, again, we don't need to really mess with this. Uh, the next loop duration, five seconds is fine. We don't really want to mess with this autocomplete. Yeah, we just want to leave that alone. Spawn rate, we are going to change, but we're not going to change that yet because we want to make sure that we have the right spread of snow before we increase the amount of snow. Sorry, losing my voice today. I'm getting ill, guys. Oh, no. So what we're going to change is the velocity. Right now, these are spraying up and then falling down. That's not how snow falls from a cloud. It doesn't spray upwards and then fall down. So under particle system, you'll see we've got add velocity, and you can see our minimums are negative 75, negative 75, and then 1,000. We want our minimum to be negative 1,000. And now they'll spray down a little bit up, but that's because we've got this guy here at 500. Change this to negative 500. Yay. Uh, we want to leave the X and the Ys the same. That way we will get some velocity to the left and to the right of these things so they won't all fall straight down. And you can see that that's working really nicely here. We're getting this nice spread towards the bottom and that's what we want. What we don't want, however, is for them all to spawn out of this singular point. And we can change that 
using sphere location. So sphere location is going to determine where they spawn from. If you drag this slider up, you can see that now they're spawning within a bigger radius. And in our example, we were using 2500 sphere radius. You see now that's got quite a lot of spread, but we're only using a few particles. We're going to bump this up to 2500 as well. And now we've got lots of these little guys falling down. Now they're a little bit quick, right? And the reason that they're a little bit quick is because we have acceleration force set to negative 980 on the Z, which is going to pull these guys down really fast. We're going to change this to negative 50. Obviously, if you want faster snowfall, that's cool. Go ahead, put a larger acceleration, but we're going to go with negative 50. You can see that this has already slowed it down, made the snow look thicker, and it's a little bit easier to see. Next, we're just going to set some variables. So here we've got set variables, and these are different, uh, different things that the... Uh, the sprites rely on, such as their life. Right now, they're only living between two and three seconds. We're going to increase this from two uh, to five and ten, so that they live a little bit longer before they die. Just so that when they hit the ground, they're going to exist there for a while before they disappear. Particle size default is two point five to eight. Eight's a little bit big, so we're going to drop this down to four. So now we've got some smaller. Uh, some smaller snowflakes, right? It's really cool. The next thing that we need to do is we need to handle the collision. So right now, if we press compile and apply, you can see from the default, uh, well, not the default, the thing that I've created beforehand for the example, uh, they hit the floor, they collide with the floor, and then they stop, or if they hit the side, they slide down. We're going to do this with collision. Okay, now collision is a little bit more awkward than collision was in the old system we are going to have to update the way that these particles are working and because we need to update the way that they're working we're going to use particle update okay so we're going to press this little plus next to particle update in the green section we know we want collision and the first thing we need to do is we need to check for collision so we're going to do a collision query which will check for collision now you can see here that we have a dependency not met and this is the solve forces and velocity you can see that is here but this has a dependency on solve forces and velocity which means that this has to come first in the stack if you press fix this issue it will just move collision query up or you can click and drag it above and that will fix it as well so now what's happening with this thing well our sprites are all doing line traces to see whether or not they've hit something so they know if they've hit something Great, what do we want to do then? Well, we need to update them further. We need to do a collision and change their linear impulse. Again, we're going to have the solve forces and velocity issue. Just press fix issue and it will rearrange these things as it needs to. Now you can see here that we have a default dampen of 1. And you may have already spotted on this little thing here, some of them are bouncing upwards because it is faking the collision. If we go over here to the example, and we give this a velocity of 1. I can show you what this looks like in the level. Boing, oh, boing, boing, boing. They hit the floor and then they bounce off. Some of them with a bit more energy than others. Uh, but this isn't quite what we want um, at all. This, this isn't snow. This isn't what snow does. So let's change that back because that's hilarious. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to set our dampen velocity to zero and leave our randomized collision vector to zero. Now what a randomized collision vector will do is it will get a random direction for these things to bounce in so they won't all bounce the same way. As we're not having them bounce, we don't need anything there, so we just kind of leave that on zero. That is all of the defaults that we need. So what we can now do is we can uh we're gonna say yes, thanks. Uh we're gonna go into our uh, folder right click fx now we need a system we're going to call this snow underscore system we're going to open this up and you're going to be greeted with a very familiar view except this time we have nothing inside of our emitters let's just turn orbit mode off um, and that's because we don't have any emitters inside of the system now down in the bottom left you can see we've got curves and we've got timeline with timeline selected press plus on the track emitters and choose your snow emitter and it will bring it in for you now this emitter is assigned to this system, so this system is now using the emitter that we've just plugged in. And you can see here it's brought over all of our defaults. Here we can change 
our values. So say we want to spawn 5,000 instead. We can change our values here without changing the values of our original system. So you can see here our original system is still using 2,500. And that's our emitter rather than our system. So our emitter uses default values. So we set default values here and our actual system can have different values but we'll always start with the default values of the emitter. So this allows us to create variants very, very easy by creating new systems. But as we've already set everything up that we need it to, uh, we, we need it to act the way that we want it to act for the snow, what we can do is we can delete the example, pull in our snow system, and there we are. Lovely jubbly. That's still falling a little bit quick for me, so I'm just going to go in, and we're going to go to our acceleration, and we're going to drop this to negative 20. Just so that it falls a little bit slower. There we go. Nice. It sticks to the floor. And it should slide down if we get any that hit the side. We don't appear to be getting any that hit the side. So what we're going to do is we're just going to give this a little bit of acceleration, like this wind. We're going to give it 5 on both the X and Y. And now we should see some that are starting to go a little bit sideways. There we go, we're getting them hit the side. Awesome. And again, if we wanted to, we could change the velocity of these things. We could say, you know, there we go, negative, negative, and zero. And you can see we're getting some really floaty guys going around here now. You can see because they've got a lack of velocity in certain places, they're just going to glide a little bit better. But there you go, guys. That is how we can set up snow using Niagara. Now, if you're having some problems uh, setting this up, this project file will be available over on my Patreon to all of my Patreon supporters. And as usual, um, thank you, everybody, for watching. There won't be any links for resources this time because we're just using engine content, so there's nothing that I need to share with you guys. Uh, but there we go. Snow in Niagara. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.